Hi everyone, it's Jessenia. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a setup, kind of watch me setup and flip through of my B6 holiday traveler's notebook. I'm going to put a few timestamps here in case you want to skip to certain parts as far as the actual setup and then the flip through at the end. So you guys can flip through if you if you want to do that. But this is my B6. It's a wide, so it's wider on the spine. You've got six elastics inside for six notebooks. I have white stitching on it and a red elastic. This is the sugar leather and the color is coconut. Then I just have a little blind emboss with a heart on the side there. And I will go through all the accessories and everything in here. Uh, at the end you'll see a little bit of as I set it up but you'll see most of it at the end I will give you a little bit of a warning that I did set this up pretty much like in the middle of the night that's the time I tend to do a lot of my more creative things so the coloring does shift a ton and then we'll go back to this at the very end of the end of the video I just wanted to put that out there I did kind of sit on this for a day. So I did all this last night and then this morning I kind of rejiggered a couple of things. So you might see a few changes from the actual setup to the flip through at the end. And that's honestly generally how I plan and set up my my foxies and my traveler's notebooks is I set them up and then I change things around. And then as I get more stuff in, it kind of grows into the planner and I'll sometimes add a little sticker sheet or add a little dashboard or something as I go. So so it's it kind of changes as as you have it for a while so anyways let's get into the setup I'm starting out here by trimming down my papers if I do want to note how I trim my pages here as you can see I'm lifting the trimmer and starting kind of a little bit inside I'm not trimming the entire piece off and you'll see at the very end kind of that whole outer piece is still sort of connected that's how I trim pages without cutting off the crop marks. I get asked that question all the time with printables is how do I trim my pages without like, cause if you slice the whole thing off, you're going to lose the crop mark that you've, you've got there. So that's how I trim my pages and um, don't lose the crop mark. Just a little tip there. I am using my Fiskars paper trimmer. I purchased this from Amazon. It works really well for me and I quite like it. And all of these are pieces of vellum and pieces of paper. Pretty much all the ones I'm trimming down here I've printed myself. A lot of the artwork is from a Cheeky Darling clip art set that I purchased, like this kind of silvery one, a lot of the Christmassy looking ones. The bows, I made that myself and printed it on acetate, but it's super easy. You just, you can make stuff yourself or you can buy digital packs from Etsy and just print out papers on your own. You can also, I mean, of course, always go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and pull in papers and stuff there. I did just switch around the angle of my paper trimmer because I was having a hard time fitting my, like, my person <laughs> underneath the, um, the camera setup and everything. It's a little bit awkward with the paper trimmer. So... I'm just going in. I like to have everything kind of trimmed and ready to go. That way when I'm setting everything up, I don't have to keep pulling stuff like big bulky things out and I can kind of just grab and pick up whatever I want as I go. It just makes life a lot easier. So that's always how I start out is I have everything printed and then I trim everything. Of course, sometimes you have to trim stuff as you go, but hopefully this sort of minimizes the pulling out the paper trimmer after the fact. So once I've got everything cut down, I go in with a bone folder. Mine is from Martha Stewart that I picked up from Michaels ages ago. You can use any bone folder and it just helps you get a nice crisp kind of fold on the on any paper. So if you work with printables or you print out a lot of stuff on your own, that's always a nice thing to have. So I'm just doing that and then I am using a corner rounder as you can see here, here and I'm rounding the corners on the outer edge. I personally like to do that. It's definitely not necessary, but I just think it looks pretty. I don't I don't use it in all of my planners, but for some reason in my B6, I just really like the way it looks. I think it just makes it look fancier. So I go ahead and I do that on all of them. I do, as you can see clearly, that I print all of these to and cut them all down to be dashboard size so they can fold around and insert. But of course, if I end up not using it as a dashboard, I can always just slice that in half and use it like in a collage or as something else. I also don't use all the papers that I printed. I like to have more. Sometimes I end up with more. Sometimes I don't have enough and have to print something out. But I 
I definitely, there's some things that you're seeing here that won't actually end up in my planner. It definitely changes and it's a creative process. So you never really know, I feel like until you set it up, at least for me, that's how it works. This is probably my favorite piece of acetate. I hand wrote some lyrics on there with a gold pen and I just think it turned out really pretty. So next here I'm pulling in the notebook. I'm using some inserts that I was using in my fall setup. So I did just change out the cover there so that I didn't have the tab stuck to it. And then I'm pulling in a notes insert that was from a collab with Planning World, pulling in a recipes insert as well, which I do think I end up changing out because I decided I'm going to have recipes in my A6. Then this is just a list insert. I titled it shop because I use it for shop lists. And then this one just says list because I use that for regular personal lists. And then the last insert here is a gifts insert where I can jot down lists and cards to send to people and things like that. So here I swap out the uh, recipe insert for my memory insert because I realize I also just need that in my B6. So I like to have my layout of inserts in there, especially because some of them were decorative. So it's nice to kind of know where those will fall. As you can see, I'm starting out here with a clear dashboard from Foxy Fix in that first insert. I did pull a Holly Nichols print that I want to put in that front section. These are exactly five by seven, so I do need to trim them down just a pinch to be able to fit them inside that clear dashboard. And so I just do that and then I go ahead and pop it in there. So that's sort of how it's going to start. And then I decided I was going to go every other with the clear dashboard. So I'm going into the third one here and slipping that dashboard in there, putting in another Holly Nichols print that I have into the front section of that one. Kind of like shimming it in. <laughs> And then again, skipping one insert, going into the next one and popping in another clear dashboard. And I am going to put in a third Holly Nichols print into that little section. I feel like you all are going to be sick of me talking about her prints, but I just love them. I think they're beautiful and I love having them in my planner. So next here, I'm pulling in that acetate that I was saying I hand wrote some lyrics on. And I'm putting in a piece of vellum that I printed from the Cheeky Darling digital set to slip underneath it just to make it decorative. And I wanted to put a little collage of me and my boyfriend in the section next to it. So I have a piece of red paper that I got from Michael's that I cut down. And that Mary card is a an actual Christmas card from Sugar Paper that I just sliced the front off of it. I made myself some stocking die cuts with some glitter paper from Michael's. I honestly just drew a stocking and cut it out by hand. Nothing super fancy. I'm using the Tombow like glue double stick adhesive tape. I love that. It's so handy and easy to craft with. It's the permanent one, but you can also get a removable one if you want. And then that's just a picture of me and my boyfriend that I printed out and I'm just collaging it all together. I use some Baker's, I think it's called, is it Baker's string? Baker's twine? Um, just to loop through the top of the stockings that I made so that it looked like they were just hanging on a string. And I think this turned out really cute. I think this is probably my favorite little dashboard that I had set up here. So I'm going in with the string and I'm gonna put it into the back and just tape it down with some scotch tape just so that it kind of stays in place and you don't see where it's stuck down on the front and it's sort of hidden in the back there. And then I'm gonna go in and trim it with just a pair of scissors that I have. So that's the inside of that one there. You will see me pull inserts in and out. I know that probably doesn't seem very practical, but it's easier for me to see inserts in the planner, but it's easier for me to put stuff into the dashboards outside of the planner. So I tend to pull things in and out a lot. I know it doesn't always make logical sense, but sometimes the creative process is not logical. So I'm flipping over to the back part of that dashboard. I'm pulling in a Pigeon Paper Co. postcard along with some glitter paper that I purchased from, I think it was Michael's, and just to finish off that little dashboard section. I do flip through the planner a lot as I'm setting it up. It helps me kind of see the flow of things and just make sure everything's looking the way I want it. So that's just a piece of vellum I slipped into like over that other insert. And then here I'm gonna fill the back of that other dashboard. I'm pulling in this little card from Sugar Paper that comes in with orders and just taped it on a piece of printed paper and slipping it into the inside of that dashboard. 
So then I'm going to pull in this bow acetate and wrap it around the memory insert. And then moving on to the back of that clear dashboard, I'm pulling in some uh, paper that I just sliced in half, so one of those dashboards that I sliced in half, and I'm pulling in some printed pictures that I pulled out of my computer. In, I printed them in black and white just because I always think that's easier. It goes with every planner setup instead of having colored pictures and having to worry about whether they go or not. So I mostly print out pictures in black and white and I'm just taping them down with my adhesive roller thingy there. I do end up changing this out. You'll see in the end that I end up changing this out because by the time I flipped through my planner, I felt like it was a little bit cluttered. It was just too much going on. I felt like there were too many pictures on one page. So I ended up consolidating to, to three photos, which again, you'll see at the very end. But I do love the idea of doing something like this. So it's just, it's very similar what I ended up doing, but I just um, made it a little simpler. I feel like I have sort of an in-between as far as being really decorative and being very simple. I know a lot of traveler's notebook setups that I've seen personally tend to be a, have a lot more going on than I personally do. I just keep things a lot more simpler. That's my personal taste. Honestly, I love seeing traveler's notebook setups though that have so much stuff in them where they have pockets and things that pop out of everything. I think they're really, really cool. But... I tend to just like things that are a little bit more simpler for myself because otherwise my brain just feels a little too cluttered, I think. So I try to have, write a fine line in planning where things are decorative and fun, but not too much where I personally just feel overwhelmed with what's going, what's going on. So that's that. That washi was from Simply Gilded, in case you're wondering. And then I did put another one of those glitter papers on the other side of that dashboard so you kind of saw there and then I'm just slipping them right in and then putting that insert back moving on to the next little section here I'm just pulling in another piece of vellum and putting it around that shop insert and then here I'm going to put a little happy Christmas card this is from a sugar paper set a card thingy <laughs> and I'm gonna just cut off the front so this is kind of the same thing that I had in that first little section and I'm just trimming it down here I'm gonna place it on top of some more of that vellum and I'm going to pop it into the dashboard super simple I feel like you can really use anything to craft with I almost used wrapping paper for some of my dashboards as well and then I ended up not because I had enough papers but I thought that was also a good idea. If you don't have any scrapbook papers, you can use wrapping paper. So I'm popping everything back into the strings of the planner here. As you can see, now that I've kind of got everything, like all the bigger things kind of put in there, and I'm going to add in or just kind of, you know, pop in some other things. So here I'm just sort of changing things out. I put in a piece of acetate from Michaels there instead. And then I moved the bows over to where the list insert is. I ended up taking off the decorative cover because I just really wanted the bows in there and I didn't want them to, if, to feel too cluttered. So I put a plain cover on it and then wrapped the bows around it because I just can't with, I, I love bows. So they win every time. <laughs> And then this is a folder I made that I love this folder so much. You can get little like die lines from the 1407 planners and they have them for different size planners. So I made this folder to go in this planner setup. I love the folder. Unfortunately, I just, the red was not the right red that I purchased. I, I really wish that it was a deeper red. This was very orangey red and I didn't quite like it. So I do end up taking it out at the end. I might end up making another folder for myself, but in the meantime, I don't have a folder in there because I just didn't feel like the color was really right for, for this setup. I am taking one of those dark, target dollar spot little pouches or folders in there, pockets, that's what they're called. And I put a resting Grinch face little card from Fox and Pip and a little die cut in there from the Clever Gal Crafts Fox and Pip little duo there. This is a, these are a few die cuts from a digital art set in my shop. So I drew those and I'm just 
popping one of them. I was deciding between the two, so I decided to pop this one with the little lights on it on this dashboard here just to add a little something. And then I'm popping it back into the planner. I ended up having glitter everywhere, which is if you see me trying to wipe things off, it's glitter because I had glitter paper and as you know, if you work with glitter, it gets everywhere. So I I noticed it was all over my planner and my desk area. That's a My Newest Addiction bookmark that I just popped in there to hold my page. As you can see, I just took the folder out. It was driving me crazy because the color just wasn't, wasn't what I wanted it to be. This is a Holly Nichols business card that I kind of just try to pop in there because it looked really pretty. The front of it has one of her illustrations on it, so I just popped it in there. This little section does change up at the end. So like I said, the picture is in that. I kind of just flip-flop it around a little bit, and you'll see that in the walkthrough at the very end. This last dashboard was the only one I had left empty, so I decided to just put in some of this star paper in the back just so that I had something kind of going on in there. And then I pulled in some paper to put in the front section, and these are some My Newest Addiction little clips. I wanted to trim it down just so it fit nicer, and I ended up trimming it down, I think, twice just to get it all in there the way I wanted. That paper clip, it's a little green and lime paper clip. That's a die cut from my shop, the mug which I end up moving as well, but you'll see it just in a different spot in the planner. <laughs> and that's a little piece of acetate for Michael's that I'm just rounding. I trimmed it down. I would think it was a scrap, but I don't even think I trimmed it down. And then I just rounded the corners and popped it in there for a little something something. Just put the same paper in the back there. And this is a beautiful sticker sheet from Paper Blush Bar that I just wanted to clip in somewhere. So as you can see, I just swapped out that die cut for a Christmas tree die cut from the same digital art set from my shop. But I just thought the green in there looked really nice. And then here, the back of that last dashboard, I decided to pull in the resting Grinch face little thing there. I took out the, since I took out the other pocket thing, I just, I wanted it included somewhere. So I just popped it into the back here with a little setup there. just shimming things around. And then the last thing that I'm gonna go ahead and add are some tabs. So these are from the Fox and Pip. They're on her regular sticker paper. When I walk through my fall setup, a lot of you asked me how I laminated those. And I'm gonna sort of show you here. I couldn't get my laminator in, but honestly, I just made this up. I have no idea if this is the right way to do it, but I write all of my, as you can see, I'm going through my inserts so that I can write down the titles of each insert that I decided to put in this planner and then I'm taking my laminating pouch and opening it up and sticking the stickers individually down on there. I try to put them at the edge so I don't have to do trimming on all the sides and I try to line them up as best as I can and I'm just going to line those up all the way on the side. I didn't show kind of the finished either because I did put a few other things in the laminating sheet so I didn't waste it and just do like these little tiny tabs and waste a whole sheet of uh, laminating paper or pouch, whatever you call these little plastic things. But that's basically it and then I laminated them and I just cut them all out after they were laminating, laminated. I cut them by hand because that's what I have, those are the tools I have, so I just cut them all by hand. And then as you can see here, I'm putting some of that tape on the one side. I am sticking the one on there, taping the back side, essentially. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing, and then just taping it together. So it's definitely a very manual process. I don't know if there's a better way to do it. If you guys know, definitely comment below, because I'm open to hearing some other ideas on how to do this, but this is just how I figured out how to do it. It works perfectly fine for me. So as you can see, I'm using also the previous, like the first insert to help me line up the second insert just so that you can visually see everything and they're not blocking each other and they kind of go down in a row. So I pull up the, like the previous inserts to line up the next one. As you can see right here, I'm doing that. And I went all the way down and then I, I had to like start back up again at the last one, I think is what it was. And I did run out of these for the very last insert, but it's fine. It's the gifts insert. I know it's in the back and so it's easy to access. But, and I didn't have like another sheet of the same color. So I just left the last one off, but it works out perfectly fine. 
we go with the flow with the planners. <laughs> I think this part probably, I mean, in total, it didn't take me the longest, but as an individual thing, I feel like this took me the longest because it, it takes a while to cut them all out, and I hate cutting things. I'm not good with scissors. <laughs> so that's the last one there, and then we can move on from the tabs. I am going in here with these Canco XOXO paper clips just to mark some pages. And then I'm just gonna close this up and stick a little charm on it. Okay, so now that you guys have seen everything being set up, I'm gonna do a little flip through of the planner. I hope you guys enjoy that. It's definitely very different for me and it was a little bit difficult, I would say. I It's strange setting up a planner on camera um, that entails so much like cutting and large items. When I pulled out my paper trimmer, I was like, how do I do this? So anyways, I did go through the planner itself in the beginning of the video so you guys know all that information. This is a little charm here from Katie Jo Collections. I do, honestly, I'm gonna tell you guys the truth, I rarely actually keep charms on my planner. I love them for pictures and if I had my planner sitting on my desk, I would keep this on there all the time, but because I travel so much with my planner, it generally just is plain because I stick it in bags. I don't want things to get squished and didn't dent the leather and things like that. So a lot of the times my foxies are just plain. Like this clip might stay, it might go. These are small enough to be okay traveling. The peach palms usually travel well for me. I do have a pen gem on the side here. This is from the holiday collection and I love it. I did put a different refill in it. I think it's the Pilot High Tech C or something like that in the point four. So I have that in here that I'm gonna be using. I don't get a pen loop on my Foxy just because I used to get them and I noticed that it kind of pushes my tabs in front and I never liked the way that, that worked. So I stopped getting the pen loops and I honestly just slip them in here, my pens, and that works fine. I know people can get those little plastic things that you can stick on pages with an elastic, but I find just popping it into the elastic works perfectly okay. So let's get into the actual planner. So here in the front, I did start out with a Holly Nichols print. I love her print, so I put the one, this one, which is my favorite one, up in the front so that I can see, because I tend to see this one the most. So I have that here. I did put some of that digital, paper, digital clip art that I printed out here in the front, this floral, and just a few little bits here in the pocket, a die cut some stickers from my newest addiction, a green and lime paper clip. These are my favorite with the little script on them. I just absolutely love those. And then here, this is probably my favorite little section. And this is the little collage that you guys saw me make. This is me and my boyfriend and then just some lyrics here. And I think I might've switched this paper out I'm trying to remember what I switched out so you guys kind of know, but I thought that the other floral that I had behind here was a little bit too intense. So I switched out to this that has a pattern but is a little bit lighter and you can really see the lyrics in there and it feels a little bit softer. And then I did stick this paper clip here from a Canco XOXO and it clips all of the past weeks together so that I can quickly access the week that I'm on. I also have this up here, but I just love these. There's it makes it so easy doing that with your planner. This is the current week that I'm on. I planned this last night. This is just a kit that I have some full boxes from Glam Planner, lots of paper blush bar um, stickers. I love these little ones from her. But anyways, that's the week that I'm on. And then in the back, we just kind of have the same scenario with some different lyrics, a sparkly paper and a die cut from the digital clip art in my shop. Some more of that floral I love. I think I've mentioned this before, but I love tying in the same sort of patterns throughout just so it feels cohesive. So you see some repeating kind of patterns. Then my favorite notes insert. These tabs are from Fox and Pip. You saw me laminate those in the setup video. That I have no, I think I showed part of it. I didn't show the whole thing because I couldn't get my laminator um, into the camera screen because I didn't have a plug long enough for it. But. I essentially just stick them into the laminating pouch and I laminate the whole thing. I don't know if there's a better way to do it, but that works for me. And then these are limited edition inserts that were a collab between me and Planning World that I have in here. I love those. 
and just some more of that paper, another Holly Nichols print. I try to distribute these kind of throughout. So we've got one in the beginning, middle, and kind of end-ish. Some acetate from Michaels. And then this business card is from, this is a business card from Holly Nichols that I just clipped in here with this paper clip and it quickly accesses my December memory spread. Some more of that acetate and some more of that floral. Then another Holly Nichols print here with some more of that same vellum that we had in the very front. A little Fox and Pip Clever Gal Crafts die cut there with the foil on it. Then I have my shop insert here with a My Newest Addiction bookmark to keep my spot. I just make lots of shop lists in there. It's essentially just a list insert, but I use it for shop lists. Take some stuff out from under there. I always like to keep some stuff in the beginning because it doesn't fall flat until you get to the middle. So this changed up a little bit as well. I had had, I think, six photos collaged together and it felt a little bit too cluttered for me and it was sort of, it just kept bothering me, but I wanted to have pictures in my planner. So what I ended up doing is I consolidated to three photos and I just moved them to here with a more simple paper next to them so that it felt a little bit less cluttered in my opinion. And then we've got just a happy Christmas card here on top of some printed paper. I did add in this little coffee mug or hot chocolate mug die cut from my digital art set in my shop and then just have that on the vellum. And here is the list insert that I'm using just for regular lists, the back of that vellum. Then just some star paper in this dashboard. I kept it really simple and I added this sheet in from Crafts by Towie after the fact with another Canco XO paper clip. I love decorating with stickers. I just think it looks cute and pretty. And then some more of that star paper and I layered in a resting Grinch face little card that I made from a digital set from Fox and Pip. And then the last insert here is my gifts insert, which I love. I do have the center with a Fox and Pip little bow clip. It's meant to be a tab, so it does have, um, it's doubled so you can fold it over onto itself. And then in the back here, I just have some more of that paper. I love to keep the same paper in the front and the back because I feel like it makes it just, it's, I don't know, it's a nice little bookend there. I do have some stickers here from Paper Blush Bar, which I adore, and some a paper clip here from The Creative Bee. And then I do have like extra stickers behind this paper just so that they don't interfere with my, like the look of my setup just for the week that I'm currently planning. So if I wanna add anything to the spread, I can just pull them out really easily. So that's pretty much it. I really like how this turned out. I know it was kind of, it was hard for me to film it and put it on, on, do it on camera while I was setting it up, but I think it turned out really nice. I hope you all enjoyed and got a few ideas for yourself as well. And that's pretty much it. I'm excited to be using this for the holidays. And this planner is just, uh, it's, I love it. It's gorgeous in my opinion. So we can like stick that on there and pretend. <laughs> I love this though. I wish I could go with it everywhere. Anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you all in the next video.